This video is going to be the first in several that describe different reaction types. First off, let's take a look at how we can classify chemical reactions. There are two main categories that we'll look at. Redox reactions, this is short for oxidation reduction, and metathesis reactions. Under redox reactions, we have subcategories of single replacement and combustion reactions, which are always going to be considered redox reactions. Simply another name for metathesis in reaction types that we're going to use is double replacement. Two other reaction types that we'll take a look at in future videos are synthesis and decomposition reactions. They don't really fit under one or the other, redox or metathesis, so we've separated them off as their own little category. The first reaction type we're going to look at is redox reactions. Before we do that, let's take a look at and define what an oxidation state is. An oxidation state is a way of keeping track of the electrons in a chemical reaction. So in many chemical reactions, electrons are going to move around from one atom to another, and this is going to cause what we call a change in the oxidation state. Another way of thinking of this is what we did with ions. So when an atom loses or gains electrons, it's going to become an ion and have a charge overall because of the imbalance in the number of protons and the electrons. This is the oxidation state. And in this case, the oxidation state represents the charge when an atom has gained or lost electron. If an electron is lost, then that means the oxidation state will become more positive, or you get an increase in the oxidation state. In the other direction, if an electron is gained, oxidation state will decrease or become more negative. So what is a redox reaction? So a redox reaction involves a change in the oxidation state of the elements. So an element will start off with one oxidation state as a reactant and end with a different oxidation state as a product. This is going to be due to the tra transfer of electrons from one atom to another. In the process, oxidation is going to be the loss of electrons. So if an atom were to lose electrons, we would say it's going to be oxidized and it will increase in its charge or oxidation state and become more positive. The reduction part of a redox reaction is the opposite. An atom is going to gain electrons in the process going from the reactants to the products. And as a result, you're going to get a negative change in the oxidation state. One of the easiest ways to remember the difference between oxidation and reduction is this mnemonic oil rig. Oil stands for oxidation is loss and rig stands for reduction is gain. Both of those sentences would end in electrons. So oil, oxidation is loss of electrons, rig, reduction is gain of electrons. In a redox reaction, both of these have to occur. So if something's going to be gaining electrons, there has to be a source of electrons for that to occur. And that's going to be the atom losing the electrons. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this reaction, we have sodium and chlorine reacting to form sodium chloride. The oxidation state on the reactant side of the sodium is zero. That's because it's by itself and hasn't been combined with anything yet. The oxidation state on the product side is one plus. This is the oxidation part of this reaction. The sodium has lost one electron to become a positively charged ion. So on the reactant side we start at zero, on the product side we end at a one plus. That requires a loss of one electron. The chlorine has an oxidation state of zero on the reactant side as well. It's not combined with any other atoms other than itself, so it's going to be have an oxidation state of zero. But on the product side, after it has reacted, its oxidation state is negative one. This is a reduction because the chlorines, each of them, have gained one electron to form the negative one charge. Overall then, this is our redox reaction. Here's another example. We have copper reacting with silver nitrate to give us silver and copper two nitrate. We start off with copper having a zero oxidation state on the reactant side, again because it hasn't combined with anything yet, and it ends with a two plus oxidation state on the product side. This is our oxidation because each of the coppers has lost two electrons to become a two plus charge. The silver starts off at the one plus on the reactant side and ends the zero oxidation state on the product side. Zero because it's by itself. This is reduction because each ion of silver on the reactant side has gained an electron and that makes it neutral 
on the product side. And remember, reduction is the gain of electrons. Again, we have both things taking place. In this case, copper is giving up the electrons, silver is accepting the electrons during this redox reaction. This reaction looks more complex, but it's still a redox reaction where only two different atoms are going to be changing their oxidation states. In this case, all of the hydrogens, the chlorines, and the oxygens are going to stay the same oxidation state. Only the manganese and the iron are going to change. Let's first look at the iron. The iron starts off at the 2 plus oxidation state on the reactant side. On the product side, it ends at this 3 plus. This is our oxidation because each of those iron atoms has lost one electron to go from a 2 plus to a 3 plus. Our manganese starts as a 7 oxidation state on the reactant side and ends as a 2 plus oxidation state on the product side. In this case, each of those manganese atoms has gained 5 electrons to go from a 7 plus to a 2 plus oxidation state. In summary, our oxidation reduction reaction has to have two different things take place. One atom has to be oxidized from the reactants to the product side and in that case lose electrons. Another atom has to gain electrons from the reactant side to the product side and that would be our reduction. Without both of these occurring you cannot have a redox reaction. 